Good morning. This is going to be a presentation on some of the Excel apps that are now available on your toolbar. If you haven't seen them, uh, of course, we're talking Excel 2013 and beyond 365. Up on the Insert tab, there are apps you can purchase. You can either go through the App Store, um, which is not exactly huge, but still got some interesting items. And you can just download and install them. Some are free, as I've indicated there. People Graph, Bing Maps are free. I'm also going to do one on smart charts, chart, smart charts. Um, eight dollars to buy, and I did buy it, um, and we'll cover that in other podcasts. The one I'm going to cover today is People Graph. It's up here. Now you can sort of see that the charts that you get here through the App Store are apps. They're not full-fledged, powerful tools. Uh, I don't compare People Graph to Power View or some of the other tools you can do in plain Excel. They're specific for a purpose. They have some limitations. They're not really meant to chew through big data. I, I see People Graph, for example, as something you want for infographics. For example, here's some data I picked up off a public site and in, in somewhere uh, around some salary data. No big secrets here, but interesting to see how it works out. But there's 6,000 rows of data. Um, you can't really turn that into a people graph that'll be of any value. You can try. It'll come up like this. This is the default mode. So this is really what you're kind of looking at. You want to produce something that's got um, some high-level numbers and some easy to understand data. It's not an analysis tool, although I will do this one with um, some slicers. The tool installs automatically once you put, just click on the app, add it, start it up, you're going to get this default screen. There aren't that many choices. Um, you can change the theme, you know, the uh, basic layouts. You can change some of the themes and some of the, t the types, which you'll see later once you get your actual data into it. There it is. You know, do you want, um, I'm doing one on money, so obviously it would make more sense to use money bags. But again, you've got a couple of uh, predetermined options, and that's about it. So in my case, because I want to minimize the number of rows that it reports, and you have no filtering ability on the charts themselves, really, um, I want to have something with a little bit tighter data. So I'll turn this large data set into a pivot table. And this isn't a pivot table training course, so I've just gone ahead and done that. Now I can add the people chart. And you can position it around where you want. It just floats on the screen. And here's the, you're going to click here. Here you can rename, just put a new title on it, um, salary. And here's where you select your data. So again, you just highlight the data that you want in your... Uh, chart and create it. So not that difficult. So again, you decide exactly what colors you want. I don't know, slight difference, you know, just the way you prefer it. You can change the themes, you know, if you prefer a different background, different types. and different shapes. As I said, in this case, it's money, so this might as well be money, and I'll put some currency on this. So that's really all there is to it in terms of creating the products. In this case, I think it's very important that you understand how these products work so that you can uh, pick one that actually, or supported by data that actually lends itself to this type of reporting. Now, of course, in this case, my data set is still large, and you may have to extend it out, and that's where this idea of, uh, of only presenting summary data works, because obviously you, in order, if your data has 50 rows, you're going to have 50 rows in this, and you can't really control it directly through this tool. In this case, I might want to um, sort the data, largest to smallest, just uh, for convenience, so that if that's what you're looking at overall. Now you can limit the amount of data by putting in some slicers on the charts, just as you would on a regular dashboard with an Excel pivot table. I'll just move that out of the way because the slicers always appear in the same spot, so at least you can see it. Oops, I always do that. Wrong thing. So add some slicers. So I could do position class, 
So by adding these in, these pivot table slicers do function. So in other words, if I wanted to um, limit the number, this is one way you can limit the amount of data that's displayed. So if your goal is to create just an infographic, um, an image, in other words, just a picture, you can basically pick and choose how you want to get that data displayed. Um, then you can save the picture as a uh, save the picture itself, various options, PNG, BMP, or scalable vector graphic, if you understand what those are. But anyways, you can create image files. Then you might want to embed those in something, but it's a static image. If you want to have something that's more dynamic, well, then you're going to be using, obviously, pivot tables and slicers make most sense. I also tried a couple of different ways to do it if I wanted to have a dynamic product and whether you could do multiples. So I added a second pivot table to this uh, display just to kind of see if it would work, see if the slices would work across both charts. So here I've added a second uh, pivot table from the same data, just stuck it on the same chart. Now I'm going to add a second people graph. This is actually counting the number of people. So I can uh, change the title. I don't know, just call it staff. And this is the data I want. Select the data. So again, now I have a second chart, which I can put wherever I can fit it. Oh, maybe a little bit tighter there. Again, this isn't a final product, so I'm just doing this to demo it. You could obviously clean it up in terms of aligning things, which is important. So in this case, uh, again, I'll sort it uh, largest to smallest. Of course, now the question is, do these uh, pivot table slicers work? Of course, one of the things I need to do here, as always, is options. Stop my pivot tables from bouncing around. Something people often forget to do. Under pivot table, analyze options. I do not want them to move. So, of course, pivot table slicers, as expected. They work on some, but not all of the tables because, of course, they're not connected. So I need to connect them to all the tables. And this is what happens if you get them all going at the same time. Kind of overkill. Of course, what happened there is I had a people graph open in another worksheet, um, and it decided I linked them all. So in this case, I got rid of that one. There's only the two here that I want to link. So I'll link those. And I believe the last one. Yes, yeah, so now they're all linked. So this should now work. So if the data filters on both tables, so it filters on all of the information. So I did some reorganization here, just moving the things around the chart uh, or the page. Um, this is just a tool for local use. Like I say, whether you whether you want to create an infographic, in which case you'd create a full size uh, image of whatever it is you want to report on and then print it or save it as a picture and embed it. In this case, it's more like a query tool, but I've linked all of these slicers to both. So you now have a reporting tool on salaries and staff um, across various organizations or job types, if that interests you, how many people and how much money is being spent. Um, yeah, interesting. The tool is pretty good. Uh, don't confuse it with a more deeper analysis tool. This is really good for creating some nice, simple infographics, quick and easy. And obviously, it's just, you know, click a few buttons and you're done. All of the formatting is done for you. You don't have a lot of choices, but sometimes you don't really care about that. You just want a, a nice, tight image. So for that purpose, pretty good. Uh, can't complain about the price. So I'm going to go on and do the uh, the other ones I mentioned, the Bing Maps and also the other one which I find quite interesting, the Smart Charts, uh, which is a paid product. But I bought it for eight bucks. I don't mind. It was a good deal. So take care. Cheers.